In this problem, we have a chimney of height 20 meters that falls down to the ground. We want to know what is the velocity of the top of the chimney when the chimney hits the ground. Okay, so because this problem asks us about velocity, that tells me that I should use conservation of energy. So I have my two points labeled, one when the object is standing up, or the chimney is standing up, and two when it has hit the ground. So my energy at um, point one, so I'm going to define my system as the chimney and the earth, so it's going to have a potential energy due to gravity, and it's got, going to have some rotational kinetic energy, possibly, but no translational kinetic energy. So, um, and then at E2, it could also have those types of energy. So potential energy due to gravity and kinetic energy from rotation. Of course, when I say when it hits the ground, I mean just before it hits the ground. Okay, so uh, when it first starts moving, it hasn't really started rotating yet, so uh, that kinetic energy is going to be zero to start. And then um, when it hits the ground, we'll define that uh, the ground to be where our potential energy is equal to zero, so that's going to be equal to zero there. Um, there is uh, no external work on the chimney because we're including gravity as part of the system. So that means that uh, because the work is equal to zero, that's equal to the change in energy. So uh, E1 is equal to E2. Right, so our potential energy at point one is going to be equal to our rotational kinetic energy when it hits the ground. Okay, so now we need to get expressions for both of those and that, uh, that involve um, the velocity, and then we'll be able to solve. Okay, so um, at point one, our potential energy, now we need to figure out, because this is an extended object, uh, what's the, the height that we should use. Right, so at point one, our potential energy due to gravity is going to be equal to the mass of the object times g times the object's height. Now, because this is an extended object, it goes all the way, the height of the object goes from 0 to L, but we want to use the uh, point of the center of mass. Right? So this should be the location of the center of mass, right? which is going to be um, L over 2, right? halfway up the chimney. We're assuming that it's a, uh, like a long, thin rod. Right? So our, our potential energy at point 1, then, is going to be M times G times L over 2. At point E2, where we have kinetic energy of rotation, that's going to be equal to, our definition is 1 half I, the moment of inertia for the uh, chimney, times omega squared. And so omega is a rotational velocity, uh, which is related to the translational velocity that we're trying to solve for. Okay, so um, now the moment of inertia for a thin rod around, or about the one end, rather than uh, around the center of mass, is one-third the mass of that object times its length squared. And so that's something that you can look up. Um, so we'll use that for the moment of inertia there. So that means that the energy at point two, the rotational kinetic energy, is one-half times ml squared over three times omega squared. Okay, so setting that equal to the potential energy due to gravity, that gives us mgl over two is equal to one-half times ml squared over three times omega squared. Now, if we remember um, our relationship between um, omega and linear velocity, translational velocity, we can divide the velocity by the distance or the radius, but in this case, that's just equal to L. Um, so that gives us an expression for um, omega, so we can plug in for the velocity there. And now, we can also look at this equation and see that there's a factor of mass on both sides, so that will cancel out. Uh, there's also a factor of one-half on both sides, so I'm going to cancel that out as well. Okay, so now um, rewriting that, that's going to give us G times L is equal to one-third L squared times B squared over L squared. So now on this side, there's a factor of L squared both on top and bottom, so that'll cancel out. And we get, as we saw for velocity, it's equal to the square root of three times G times the length of the chimney, which using... Uh, what we know for g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the length that was given as 20 meters, that gives us 24 meters per second. It would be the velocity of the top of the chimney when it hits the ground. Now, another question that we could ask is, what is the acceleration of the chimney top when it hits? Okay, so now that's, uh, when we say acceleration, we know that we have three different types of acceleration. So we could be talking about angular acceleration, we could be talking about uh, centripetal acceleration, or we could be talking about tangential acceleration. So I need to specify that this is going to be um, the tangential acceleration. Right? And that's more interesting to me than the angular acceleration because um, I don't really have a good intuition for what angular acceleration is, but I can always uh, compare a um, translational acceleration to G. 
to get a, get a sense of how big it is. So when I see acceleration, I know that that means that I uh, don't want to use energy in this case. I want to use either forces or torque, right? So because it's a rotational object, uh, a rotational motion, I want to use the rotational version of Newton's second law. So torque is equal to I alpha. And then um, also remembering that, that alpha is equal to uh, the tangential acceleration over R. But in this case, R is going to be um, the length of the chimney because right? we're looking at the top of the chimney. Okay, so um, this gives us torque. Torque is equal to, okay, so we know um, that's going to be, well, we can just go ahead and put I and then uh, tangential acceleration over L. Okay, so uh, we also need to calculate the torque from the definition of torque. So if we look at our picture again, when the chimney is on its side, right, it's just about to hit the ground, the force of gravity is acting at the um, center of mass. Right, so that would be our force of gravity. So our lever arm, in this case, is going to be L over 2. Right, so the torque, which is equal to... So uh, we, we have two interpretations of torque. Right? We have torque that tells us um, what, it, what a torque does, which is cause an angular acceleration, and then how we calculate torque, which is a force times, uh, so in this case that's the force of gravity, times the lever arm, which is L over 2, and then times the cosine, of, or the sine of the angle between them, but in this case they're, they're perpendicular, so that's going to be equal to 1. Right, so, um, and then the force of gravity, of course, is mg, so I can write this as mg L over 2. So this side is going to be equal to that side. I can rewrite that as a new equation. Um, I've got mg L over 2 is equal to the moment of inertia times tangential acceleration over L, and then also remembering that the moment of inertia is one-third times the mass of the chimney times its length squared, AT over L. Got mg L over 2. Okay, so mass cancels out. I've got mass on both sides. Um, and then as I uh, go through and um, collect the, the L, so I want to solve this for AT, so I'm going to multiply through by L and divide through by L squared, so those factors of length will all cancel out. So I end up with the tangential acceleration is equal to 3 halves G. Now, that's really interesting. This is uh, falling faster or a greater acceleration uh, than the acceleration due to gravity. Right? Three halves is one and a half. Right? So um, even though the chimney, the only force acting on the chimney is uh, the force of gravity, we can see that the, the acceleration of the top of the chimney ends up being greater than the acceleration due to gravity. So that's pretty surprising. Uh, but we'll see in a couple uh, demo videos that that actually happens. So the reason for this is because... Uh, in an extended object, there's actually all these other forces acting on the, the top of the brick. You can imagine um, you know, or the, the brick that's at the top of the chimney is attached with mortar to other bricks in the chimney. And so those other bricks are acting, uh, have internal forces that are acting on that top brick and pulling it down toward the ground. So um, with this sort of extended object, uh, you get this case where, where gravity, uh, the acceleration is greater than it would be just in free fall if it were um, a single object. So what that... In practical uh, cases, okay, so th this will happen if you have a, a truly rigid object like a, a pencil or a, a ruler, but with a chimney, what happens is that the mortar is not really set up to take those sorts of forces, and the chimney starts to break up uh, before it would uh, fall all the way to the ground. So we can see that in the video that's shown. And then there's also another video that shows that the, uh, um, that the thin rod falls faster than gravity, and so the, um, the ball um, that's attached to it uh, loses contact with the rod.